It's crawfish boil day again. Our annual crawfish boil. Really? Were those middle fingers? I don't trust you. I'm gonna have to roll the tape back. What do y'all think? Is this the ultimate color match challenge? An actual crawfish? They're still too uh, cold to really paint. Oh, okay, yeah, I almost got popped. Don't get that near me. There's Big Bird, and there's Happy Jack. Yeah, Happy Jack. Stop! <laughs> Landon, Landon, what you got there? A bit, a, fi a fireman hose? That's right. Hey, Landon, can, can you wave and say hi? Hi! Get back, get back. All right, we are putting things in the pot. Crab boil, lemons, concentrate. I'm gonna leave one or two for the other one. Yeah. I just cut up a bunch of andouille sausages. Oh yeah, onions. We're gonna put some crab boil. So this is gonna be the spicy pot. And then we have the sissy pot for those who don't like it spicy. So like, for example, my daughter, she does not like spicy crawfish. Here we go. Here's the money shot. Get them in there. Yes. It's gonna be close. This is the meal of the year. This is it. All right, get in there. There you go. Oh yeah. Oh, somebody help. Well, I was getting ready. All right. Yeah. Oh, James. That's edible. All right, now it's 30 degrees, so we gotta eat it quick. Oh, I'm hurting. We're hurting. We're hurting. We have eaten so much. It's good. It's good. Hey, I nailed it this time. This is our one time of the year to just be completely a stupid. You know when you have cuts in your hands? When you eat crawfish and you can feel the burn. Yeah, good we uh, we just peed in the woods and now 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 we're burning in places we, we shouldn't be. Very spicy stuff. Okay, we are back home. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed a little crawfish blog uh, bonus footage there it was actually the weekend prior to right now uh, so this is actually I'm filming this on Super Bowl weekend uh, so the crawfish was the previous weekend but um, definitely wanted to include a, a little little bit of footage from that it's the most wonderful time of the year uh, as far as I'm concerned we normally do it on Super Bowl weekend uh, but uh, uh, the Gaskins uh, Brandon Big Bird wasn't going to be in town so um, anyway a long time ago I did a video on some coral snake worms and I basically took two injection molds and I would inject a color snip it inject the next color snip it put the you know put the color back in the mold um, I'll definitely link that video in the description but now that I've <clears throat> matured a little bit in my hand pouring over the years I wanted to try to pour a coral snake and I have just the mold to do it. Uh, it's a BTS mold and it's, it's, it's literally like an eight inch looking snake worm. Uh, there's really no other way to put it. It's the perfect mold for something like this. I still actually have the coral snake worms from that video so long ago. So we're gonna show those to you in person all these years later and then we'll kind of do a compare and contrast at the end. Still looking fresh all this time later. Does that ring a bell, everyone? They have been in my shop <clears throat> this whole time. Yeah, there's one right there in the finesse worm. The ones that really came out nice were in the uh, kicker tail. I guess I have one of those. Yeah, there they are. There they are. Yeah, that's the AI kicker tail worm. It's like a three-year-old worm. That's all injection. So, yeah, we went to a lot of effort that day, and it's gonna take another super effort today to hand pour it. I mean, just look at that, is that not wild? But, we're gonna try it in this mold right here. So I've actually done quite a few snake-like patterns in this mold. So this one right here is sort of a corn snake is what I was kind of going for, just based on a few photos. And you know, the corn snakes maybe aren't quite that orange, but as you can see, you can get that kind of snake-like pattern. Um, so that's what we're gonna try to do today, but in a coral snake pattern, so lots of bright colors. And so what we have here is we have some black pigment, some yellow pigment, 
And then what's really tricky is to get a good red that's not going to bleed into those other colors. So for that, we're going to be using the Dead On Plastics Red. It's a very opaque red, and it's also a true non-bleed red. A lot of reds bleed, so you have to be really careful when you're putting red pigment next to something else. That's why you don't normally see red a whole lot in laminates. Um, <clears throat> it's because a lot of times you get some bleed over. Real quick, I just finished up putting eyeballs on a few five inches. So yeah, we have quite a lineup of swim baits going out this week, but um, the story of the day is gonna be right here. All right, so this is Dead On Plastics Tube Blend. Even though we're making worms, uh, I find that a little bit firmer, um, particularly in these layered patterns that are gonna get real hot. Uh, I like tube plastic actually for a worm of this size. You, know, you gotta remember this is an eight inch worm. It's a very big worm. And uh, I think firm plastic actually does quite nice. So uh, again, just a little bit of black here. This plastic's still a little bit in gel phase. <clears throat> so we want it pretty opaque. A lot of times we sort of pour with more um, translucent colors. But you know, this one, it, it pretty much needs to be black, then yellow, then red, then yellow, then black. You know, you, you need to see pretty definite transitions between the colors. But because we're doing it hand poured, we are going to try to go for a little bit of blending there as well, just to try to make it look smooth, so to speak. All right, look at this ugly thing. So, um, kind of see the head starts with a little bit of a black tip, then a yellow stripe, then a thicker section of black. And then we kind of start the main pattern, sort of these thin yellow bars with a th thicker amount of red in between and thicker amounts of black in between. And it looks like that red has those black dots in it. So we'll just substitute flake for that. Um, oh man, aren't they just so horrible? So what I'm thinking we need to do is take our mold. This will be the head, of course. And we just need to kind of slightly angle it and then just pour across real nice and slow just to get that black tip in there. This is sort of like the pouring that we did in our video called Pouring with Illusion. This will be a lot like that, <clears throat> but I think a little bit more difficult for a few reasons. But so essentially those will be our black tips of the snake, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna try to lay down all the black first and kind of go in color layers, I guess. Okay, we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. The spacing is about right here. It's a little bit thicker strip of black. Okay, right, so something about like that. It's actually not too terrible. Let's sort of let it set up for just a second. What's cool about the way this mold is configured is that you can kind of pour straight across it, okay? So now what we have is the thin black tip in the head. Then we can fill that in with yellow. And then we have a longer, thicker stretch of black, okay? So if we look at our example, right there in the head, right? Thin black tip, then a yellow stripe, then a longer section of black. The next black could even be, I don't know, about right here. Just kind of pour it till it kind of fills in, right? Something about like that. Nice and even, good even spacing. So if we turn it, this will leave room for a thin strip of yellow, then red, then another thin strip of yellow, then our strip of black, basically, and so on. So then the next strip of black, we can put approximately down in that section. So as you can see, lots of work here that we're trying to figure out. 
All right, so the tail actually, I believe, just the example that I'm looking at, the tail actually ends with black. So I think that's actually gonna work out quite nicely. We can essentially just come across the, the uh, sorry, the back of the, t the tail here, and just kind of come across and just let it fill in. Just like this. Just like that. Boom. Okay, there's what we have. And uh, I think they're looking pretty even for not being actually poured together in a row, pouring separately. I, uh, I feel like I got the spacing pretty good. And uh, now comes the hard part, uh, is filling in these gaps without messing it up. You know, because right now, if you mess up the black, you can just peel it out, right? However, if I mess up the red or mess up the yellow and I try to pull it out, it's going to pull everything out with it. Um, so now is really when it gets tough, but I like a good challenge. All right, next comes the old yeller. So here we go. Let's just dump some in, start there. <clears throat> and again, we actually want things fairly opaque today. Of course, it would be cool to, uh, to do a, a see-through version of it too and just see how the colors played on one another. But I think for accuracy's sake, we've got to thicken things up a little more than we normally would. Certainly more than uh, the illusion video was. Well, the whole point of that was for you to be able to see through the layers to develop new colors that aren't really there. Always a fun concept. Okay, yeah, that right there should be plenty. I would think a little bit more, I guess. What the hell? Dun, 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 dun. Okay. All right. I think that's looking okay. And then we're actually going to dull that yellow just slightly with some MF olive. This is basically just just to take the edge off, right? Just to brown it up a little bit. We got a decision to make. If we look at our example, okay? There's really only those black spots in the red. The yellow is just yellow. But I think I want to actually, just to keep things congruent, I'm actually going to add some black flake to the yellow uh, because it's going to have to go in the red. And I just think I just think the pattern might look just a little more together if both of them have some black flake. That's just kind of where I'm at right now. So we'll, hopefully that doesn't just completely ruin the whole thing. But just a little bit, you know, we don't need a ton of this black flake. So I'm thinking that will work. Yeah, just like that. Okay. I am nervous, but it's time to lay down the first yellow and we're just gonna fill in this gap. Okay, so fairly simple here. We're just filling in this space. Nothing too wild. Okay, there it is. Oh boy, I'm nervous. Don't know why I'm nervous. Yeah, good enough, good enough. I do think I'll like putting the flake in the yellow. Yes, I know there's no black spots in the yellow, but for just the sake of just keeping the, the pattern congruent in our uh, bait here, I think it will be okay. All right, now comes a more tricky part. We now need a much thinner strip of yellow. These are just kind of little thin bars. And the way that we do that is we kind of pour them at a slight angle up next to that black, okay? So, I'll show you right now. Get this mixed up. Here we go. We're just pouring a thin strip across the front, those black bars there. Just like that. All right. There it is. 
And what's interesting is because this is open pore, right, if we look where those yellow bars go, okay, you can see there's still some exposed mold in there, right? Those colors don't fill the whole thing in, which means there's going to be a little bit of something else eventually filling in, which isn't really how these snakes do. You know, these coral snakes, the whole thing is yellow. The whole thing is red. Um, doing it this way, open pore mold style, there's going to be a little bit of variation there, which I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see if it looks good. So that's kind of where we're at now in our uh, journey here. Okay, there it is. So I think once those gaps are filled in with red, we will have a coral snake, right? Just with a lot more pattern to it. You know, this one really only has really two, I guess. I could only fit in or only wanted to fit in two rounds of the pattern, right? Here's a whole section of the pattern. Here's a, no, another section of the pattern. This will have a little bit more to it. Um, so hopefully these will, these will turn out well. Fingers crossed. We have put a lot of work into this, but that's all part of the fun. All right, so it's time to add some red. My son Landon's favorite color, probably. I don't know, he likes green a lot too, but he does like him some red. Every time we're driving, he'll be like, red light, green light. So he definitely likes likes uh, his reds and greens. Okay, isn't that just an awesome shade of red? It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Okay. All right, yeah, the plastic's still a little bit in gel. So I think what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna finish cooking this. You can see that's still pretty, uh, pretty runny. Yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish cooking that, then we'll build the rest of this color because we're actually gonna add a few things to this. Okay, now comes kind of the hard part. I um, Guess I'll just kind of do it this way. Basically, we want to just fill in this whole thing with red. Just pour the whole thing. This is really hard to do on camera, by the way. If you didn't know that. And just fill in the whole thing and then pour it out, leaving sort of a shell, a capsule of red, if you were. We are capsuling this worm. The hotter you pour it, the better, because that's not a very good capsule. That's okay. This is our test run. <laughs> okay, that's already set up. Yep, needed to get it a little bit hotter, but I'll show you kind of what we're doing there. Now you can see there's still a little bit of room inside the body that we're gonna try to fill in with some white pearl. Okay, so that uh, you can see we, we have a man down. That first capsule that I did, <laughs> that first red capsule that I did on camera, the plastic was just way too cold so the, plastic, the, the, the capsule was too thick. So I decided just to scrub that cavity, leaving us with nine that I think will work. So actually, there is the shell from that tenth cavity. So as you can see, it's definitely got sort of the coral snake thing going on. It's sort of the hand poured counterpart to that. Uh, so once we kind of fill in, as you can see, this is just a hollow shell of a worm. I just didn't shell it enough, right? You can see how kind of cracked the layers are still. Uh, you know, obviously, <clears throat> the answer to that is heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in these holes, right? Fill in these capsules with sort of a white pearl. You know, normally the belly of a snake is white, and we want to be as accurate as we can. So a little bit of white pearl for the bellies, and then they're going to go on the hot plate to kind of gel all of these layers together. Okay, so I actually looked at the underside, the belly of a coral snake, and it's not white. Basically, it just kind of continues the pattern, but it just kind of fades it into a lighter shade. Uh, so we're really not going to be able to do that. So we're just going to kind of, I guess, do the best we can and fill this in with sort of a brown white pearl. So a little bit of an off pearl. That's not just completely snow white. 
and basically that's it right there and basically we're just gonna have to fill in these gaps best we can without overfilling it because again we're gonna fire these molds on the hot plate and uh, get them nice and hot so basically that is the final step all right so we have our nine worms because I suck and couldn't get ten basically on the hot plate and we're just gonna fire them up full steam ahead we're gonna turn it all the way up to 400 and just kind of wait till everything just kind of looks melted together right no more cold cracks and we feel like the worms have bonded together all right and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide those molds off the hot plate and immediately lay them flat on this giant aluminum plate which will draw the heat out what that allows me to do is sort of stop it in its tracks right as soon as i think that those are done and they've gotten as melted as they need to get i can lay them right on that and stop it that way it's not going to continue to gel and then melt my pattern away okay let's take a look drum roll please let's uh we'll flip this one over okay yeah that is uh the one with <laughs> only four out of the five so let's just go ahead and pull one Ugh. hey it's very coral snaky you can see the the colors are blended a little bit more right so as opposed to the shell <laughs> earlier that uh, we did not actually complete you can see sort of a difference in the way that the colors are done there. So that's what it kind of looks like when they are melted all the way. You'll see things just kind of smooth out. And um, we actually did a really great job getting them to pour this clean. So I'm, uh, I'm really actually thrilled about that. So let's go ahead and pull one of these. Yeah, look at that. Oh man, I, I tell you, you know, you can nitpick things, of course, but color profile wise, nailed it. Put this thing in the water, and it's going to have all the color profile of a, of a real coral snake. And you can see this mold may be blended a little bit less. So let's compare. You can see maybe the colors faded a little more. It looks like the yellow stayed a little bit more intact on that one. Down here in the tail, it's about the same. I don't know, maybe we're just splitting hairs. But um, yeah, super happy with how these came out. Really, really consistent results between both molds. Yeah, so here they are in natural sunlight. We are outside. Natural light always does it better. Yeah. Check that out. That is... Landon, what do you think? Snakes, buddy. Creepy snakes. Real creepy snake. I see. Did y'all hear him? Creepy snake. That's right, Landon. Creepy snakes. I don't know. Those are really good. Now that I'm looking at them outside, they're growing on me. That is 100%. If I saw that in the grass, I would freak out. Okay, here are these snakes in their natural environment, in the grass, slithering through. Yeah, that right there really shows them. That's thumbnail right there. That is, now they're starting to take effect. Those are, <laughs> oh, that's creepy. Oh, man, we may have gotten these a little too close because, ugh, snakes. But yeah, what, what do y'all think? Do you like the hand poured version? I'm certainly digging it. The more I look at them, the more the whole color profile to me is better than the injection. And um, just the way that the colors blend is more pleasing to my eye. It's not, you know, exactly straight bars, solid bars like, like the coral snake tends to be. But I think the hand poured version of it is, is a little bit more pleasing to my eye just as a bait maker and you know I think the overall color profile speaks for itself heck yeah that was fun 
and uh, the weather's finally nice. It's finally not freezing here in Florida. I actually wish I was fishing today. This is nice overcast conditions, but uh, Bass Pro is still Bass Pro Shop is still holding my boat. We're going on three months now. Made several phone calls. I don't know what the heck is going on up there. Why they have not even diagnosed my engine yet? So starting to lose a little bit of patience there i mean is, is three months outrageous you guys tell me um anyway this would be a great day for fishing but i said ah i'll film instead happy i did um ugh, snakes i actually just forwarded uh what's going to be the thumbnail to a couple of uh bait making buddies and and uh they they thought they looked pretty good so that gives me confidence that that we did well um but yeah, uh, I, I guess happy Super Bowl weekend. As I'm filming this, it's not Super Bowl Sunday yet. Um, but uh, everybody enjoy the big game. You know, I guess it would be a real real big deal for Cincy. I don't like the Rams, so I guess I'm, I guess I'm going to have to go Cincy for this one. Joe Burrow and company. But uh, anyway, um, let me know in the comments down below how we did. Let me know if, uh, if you would throw a coral snake pattern. Um, and if you're gonna try one, I would love to see some other people give this a shot. Um, you know, you can do it in pretty much any mold. It doesn't even have to be a worm. You could do that. You could try that in uh, in the Ginger Ninja or any other mold that doesn't really even, uh, uh, you know, imitate a snake at all. You know, that's what's cool about bait making. You can do it your way, how you want. It's literally better than Burger King. Anyway, we are not gonna ramble our heads off. Uh, in fact, we're gonna go inside and do some house chores. So I think we will see all y'all in the next video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and shoot us lots of comments down below.